Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians. Introduction The word Corinth literally means an ornament that would adorn a place. The city of Corinth was considered as an adornment to all the other cities around it for all its beauty. The book of 1 Corinthians was written around 57 to 59 AD by the Apostle Paul, the Apostle of the Gentiles, formerly known as Saul of Tarsus. Romans 11 verse 13 In order to understand this epistle more fully, you should first read Acts 18 to get the correct setting for this epistle. Chapter 1 Division in the Church 1 Corinthians 1 verse 1 Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sosthenes our brother. Called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, apostle means a sent one. Paul was sent by Jesus Christ to be the apostle of the Gentiles. 1 Timothy 2 verse 7 Whereunto I am ordained a preacher, and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ, and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. 2 Timothy 1 verse 11 Whereunto I am appointed a preacher, and an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13 For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Through the will of God, today there are many apostles appointed by men and by denominations, but there are none called of Jesus Christ. Christ gave unto the church first apostles and prophets, while the church still saw through a glass darkly, but after the Grace Church Age epistles were completed, they could then see face to face, clearly. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 to 8 the offices of apostle and prophet were no longer needed, and they were done away with along with the sign gifts that accompanied its message and its messengers. The two offices and their accompanying gifts ceased to operate when blindness in part happened to Israel sometime prior to the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. Sosthenes our brother, the former rabbi in Corinth who eventually got saved and helped the apostle Paul there. Acts 18 verse 17 Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Gallio cared for none. Of those things. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 2 Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. The church of God. This is the church that Paul started at Corinth, not a church started by members of the little flock. The Church of God is a generic term used interchangeably with the Church of Christ, or Churches of Christ. Sanctified in Christ Jesus, Paul says to them that are sanctified, set apart, in Christ Jesus that they are called to be saints, he does not say that they are called to be saved. Called to be saints, this is not in the future tense, but rather in the present tense. Saved people are elected to be conformed into his image and we are called to be saints. This speaks of the saved person's duty. It does not speak about an unconditional election or calling to be saved as some teach. Both theirs and ours, just who the word theirs is speaking about is determined by the context of what came before the word itself in the preceding verse and a half. The word theirs is referring to the church of God at Corinth and the all everywhere that call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not speaking about the little flock of kingdom saints since Paul does not mention them at all in the first two verses or anywhere else in this whole epistle for that matter. The word ours is also defined by the context of the same preceding verse and a half. The only people that the word ours can possibly be referring to is Paul and Sosthenes. 1 Corinthians 1 verses 3 to 4 Grace be unto you, and peace, from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf, for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you, and peace, Grace and peace are the two very familiar words that Paul opens all of his epistles with in one form or another. Grace is mentioned because we are now in the dispensation of grace instead of being in the dispensation of the law as Israel was previously. Peace is mentioned by Paul because that is where we now find ourselves with God. We were at enmity with God before the cross because of our sin, but God's Son has made peace for us through His death on the cross which paid the wages of our sin. Romans 6 verse 23 
The grace of God which is given you, Paul is speaking about how God is dispensing grace in this present dispensation that the believers in Corinth were recipients of. The Apostle Paul who is our pattern today was grateful to God on the Corinthians' behalf as he was for himself because while under the law, Paul was God's number one enemy as the chief of sinners. It was for that reason that he became the first person under the gospel of the grace of God, Acts 20 verse 24, to receive the long suffering of God's love as a pattern to all who would believe on Christ after him. 1 Timothy 1 verses 15 to 16 This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. How be it? For this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. 1 Corinthians 1 verses 5 to 7 that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In all utterance, speaking to others. In all knowledge, the manifold wisdom of God that was given to Paul to give to us today. It is Paul's desire as well as God's that every believer become enriched in all the knowledge that God has given to Paul to give to us so that we will not come behind other believers in any gift as we serve him and wait for his coming. We have no excuse if other churches understand Christ's heavenly ministry through the apostle of the Gentiles better than we do because he has given it to all believers equally. He wants the same things for us today as he wanted for the Corinthians back then, which is to understand the mystery truth for us today. 1 Corinthians 1 verses 8 to 9 Who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. Confirm you unto the end, Paul tells them that Christ will confirm them unto the end, as he will us. We will be blameless because we are in Christ. Confirmation is not a church ritual or rite that can be conferred by a man or organization, but rather it originates from the God of heaven. That ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, the day of his appearing, the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ, save people called to be saints, and they are called unto the fellowship of his son. Ephesians 3 verses 8 to 9. The preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery is all about fellowshipping in the mysteries revealed to Paul to give to us concerning his son. Romans 16 verses 25 to 26. Paul takes parts of the first four chapters of this epistle to correct those who would be followers of men before he deals with the immorality in the church and its many doctrinal errors. There are those today that are repeating the same mistakes as during Paul's day by attributing things to Paul that he himself never did, totally ignoring his opening remarks in the epistle to the Corinthians. Many churches today place way too little emphasis on the doctrine and ministry of the Apostle Paul. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10 Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Ye all speak the same thing. They were supposed to think the same thing about this subject of division in the church, and they were supposed to have the same understanding as how to solve the problem. They could solve the problem by taking heed to what Paul had to say on the subject, and then they had to be willing to submit to what his judgment was. 1 Corinthians 1 verses 11 to 13 For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? Is Christ divided? No, of course not. Was Paul crucified for you? No again. Were ye baptized in the name of Paul? Was anyone, anywhere, baptized in Paul's name? No, the Corinthians were all baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you think that the division in this church that followed Cephas, Peter, 
didn't favor water baptism for the remission of sins? They most certainly did, as he was the leader of the twelve apostles, and they were constantly telling Israel to repent and to be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins, but Peter's program to the circumcision was not the same as Paul's to the body of Christ. What about those twelve that followed Apollos that were re-baptized by Paul in Acts 19 verse 5? He didn't baptize them in his name. The problem in this church was one of personalities and of whose doctrine to follow. Some wanted to follow Peter and the eleven with their gospel of the kingdom message, while others wanted to stick with Paul and the mystery program that he received later. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 14 I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius. I thank God that I baptized none of you. Many people will parrot what others say on this verse, and they turn around and attack Paul's own word, our pattern, by taking this whole passage out of its context. They start off only quoting the first part of the verse, I thank God that I baptized none of you. They partially quote this verse to imply that Paul never baptized anyone in Corinth, he did, Crispus and Gaius. Paul baptized between four to ten people there depending on how big Stephana's household was. Crispus and Gaius, Crispus was the chief ruler of the synagogue in Corinth. Acts 18 verse 8 above. The same Gaius is mentioned in Acts 19 verse 29. There is another Gaius in the Bible as well. Why did Paul say that he thanked God that he baptized no more than he did in Corinth? Paul answers the question himself. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 15 Lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. Paul was thankful that others could not say that he baptized anyone in his own name and thus contributing to the division in the church. Paul gives us the only answer that we need. Remember that many in Corinth were baptized, Acts 18 verse 8, they were just not baptized by Paul. Paul was the leader, and he established the church in Corinth, and the many that believed and were baptized by Paul and his companions were not wrong in what they were doing. Paul had not been told not to baptize anyone. The apostle Paul is careful to express here that Christ is not divided, and that his followers should not divide over personalities. Today, a billion people have divided Christ and have gone after another gospel. These are followers of Peter, Cephas, today who preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins to Israel. We must not repeat the same mistake by elevating Paul today above what scriptures say concerning him, but rather follow his teachings as the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13. It is Paul's office that is magnified in scripture, and not the person of Paul during this dispensation of grace. Large denominational churches have grown by following Peter and the twelve apostles with their kingdom message which was set aside when Israel went into blindness, and they have neglected Paul's epistles and his message for us today. 1 Corinthians 1 verses 16 to 17 And I baptized also the household of Stephanas, besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. And I baptized also the household of Stephanas. Stephanas is mentioned three other times in this epistle, 1 Corinthians 16 verses 15 and 17 and 24. His household became the first fruits, first believers, in the region of Achaia, a region north of Corinth. When John was sent by God, he was sent to Israel to baptize them as a nation for the remission of their sins. When Christ called his disciples and sent them in Matthew 10 verses 1 to 7, he sent them also to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He told them to preach the gospel of the kingdom to none but unto the Jew only because it was to the Jew that the kingdom was promised. Matthew 4 verse 17 and 23. They preached, as did John, that they needed to repent and be baptized. Baptism has no part in anyone's salvation today in the dispensation of grace as Paul taught in his word. The apostles after Christ's resurrection tarried in Jerusalem and were baptized with the Holy Ghost as promised by Christ. Acts 1 verse 5 below. It was Christ who baptized them with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was what they were baptized with not by. 
For example, Acts 1 verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Sadly, it is in this very same portion of scripture that my friends totally ignore the plea, the beseeching, by the Apostle Paul to speak the same things. They immediately go off and take the passage out of context and apply Ephesians 4 verse 5 to it when 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 explains what is meant in Ephesians 4 verse 5. The one baptism referred to in Ephesians 4 and 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 was the baptism by the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. Ephesians 4 verse 5 One Lord, one faith, one baptism. There was a former baptism with the Holy Spirit that was practiced in the early Acts period when the gospel of the kingdom was still going to the Jew only by the twelve. Christ baptized his Jewish disciples with the Holy Ghost as was promised earlier by John the Baptist. Christ was the baptizer, and he was baptizing Israel with the Holy Ghost. Today we are baptized by the Holy Ghost, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13, into one body, not with him. The Holy Ghost is the baptizer. John the Baptist did not say that the Holy Ghost would come and baptize them, but rather that Jesus would baptize them with the Holy Ghost, those Jewish kingdom saints. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 sheds more light on the meaning of Ephesians 4 verse 5 and remember Paul and his companions were baptizing with water well after 1 Corinthians 12 was uttered. Paul himself was not baptized with Israel's baptism of repentance, nor did he baptize others with it. That would be great confusion as he is the pattern for us today. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been, all made to drink into one Spirit. When Paul uttered Ephesians 4 verse 5, he was telling people that the baptism with the Holy Spirit was no longer in operation because in this new dispensation of grace there is no more Jew or Gentile, but one new man. The problem returns when they get to verse 17 as well, but again they only like to partially quote the verse to keep it saying what they want to make it say regardless of what Paul, our pattern, intended it to say. Christ sent me not to baptize, verse 17 doesn't end there, because there is a comma and not a period. It goes on to say, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Paul emphasizes that he was sent to preach the gospel not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be of none effect. Paul's baptizing wasn't making the cross of none effect because he kept doing it right up until the time he was locked up in prison at almost the end of his ministry. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18 For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. The preaching of the cross, that the sinless Son of God died on the cross for our sins, and he was buried, and he rose from the dead the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. The power of God, this is the gospel, good news, of Christ. Romans 1 verse 16 For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. The preaching of the cross is the gospel of Christ, and it was not preached until after it was revealed to the Apostle Paul, and he has given it to us in his epistles. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 19 For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Isaiah 29 verse 14 Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Satan should have paid attention to that verse, for in it God himself prophesies the destruction of Israel's wisdom and the world's wisdom which is from Satan himself. Satan's wisdom could not understand the implications of a risen Savior, and therefore it was doomed to fail. 
The cross was foolishness to Satan because he didn't understand the outcome of it and how it sealed his doom and all who would fall for his worldly wisdom. The best Satan can offer is the wisdom of this world, while we have all the wisdom of God at our fingertips. Amen. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 20 Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? At the resurrection God did indeed make completely foolish the wisdom of this world by defeating death and hell for us. He made Satan to look like the fool he really is by announcing to the world that a new man had been created because of the resurrection. That new man is you and I today in the body of Christ, who will one day dwell in the heavens where Satan's minions have temporarily usurped. Thrones and dominions for Satan's purposes. Those thrones will be vacated at the midpoint of the tribulation period when there is a war in heaven and Satan and his angels are cast out of the heavens for good. Revelation 12 Satan doesn't want this mystery to be made known unto the church, which is what we are called to do. Make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which was kept secret since the foundation of the world. Ephesians 3 verses 8 to 9 unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1 verses 21 to 22 For after that in the wisdom of God the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. In the wisdom of God, the world by its own wisdom does not know or seek after God, so God uses the foolishness of preaching to save them that will believe the wisdom of God by faith. The Jews require a sign, Israel became a nation while in Egypt with signs being shown to them from God by Moses. The signs themselves do not produce faith, for faith comes by hearing the word of God, they were for the Jew to verify that the messenger and the message were from God. Israel required a sign from Christ, and he gave them one, the sign of Jonah the prophet who spent three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The Greeks seek after wisdom, the Greeks are Gentiles. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 23 But we preach Christ crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. We preach Christ crucified, literally, Christ's death as foretold in the Jewish scriptures. Psalm 22, Isaiah 53 and Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27. Unto the Jews a stumbling block, they have to believe their own scriptures concerning Christ's crucifixion in Psalm 22. Unto the Greeks' foolishness, they spend their time in nothing else but to tell or to hear some new thing. Acts 17 verse 21. 1 Corinthians 1 verses 24 to 25. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Christ the power of God, the resurrection is the power of God over death. The wisdom of God, this is how God defeated Satan by the resurrection of Christ. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 26 For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, are called. Your calling, notice that there are not many wise called, this implies they are wise first, and then they are not later because their worldly wisdom blinds them to the truth. 1 Corinthians 1 verses 27 to 29 But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. The foolish things of the world, people preaching the gospel. The very purpose God does what he does is to bring glory to himself. Your worldly wisdom brings you glory, and he will not share his glory with another. God is not opposed to wisdom, but the wisdom which exalts itself against God is foolishness and the whole world sees it in the end. Satan is exposed as the father of lies that he is. 
1 Corinthians 1 verses 30 to 31, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that, according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Jeremiah 9 verse 4, Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother, for every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. God indeed is wise. Glory in that, instead of your accomplishments, and it will empower God's ministry in your life. Chapter 2 The Hidden Wisdom 1 Corinthians 2 verses 1 to 2 And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ, and Him crucified. There are many preachers who allow their worldly wisdom to take the power away from their messages by exalting the method of delivery over the content of the message. Paul cast aside all his training as a Pharisee and just preached the simplicity of the gospel as he heard it from Christ, and it alone had the power to change people's lives and he saw that on a continual basis. I determined not to know anything among you, but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Some use verse 2 as their excuse not to study the rest of the scriptures when we are told over and over again that we should study. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 1 Corinthians 2 verses 3 to 5 And I was with you in weakness, and in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. In demonstration of the Spirit and of power, when Paul was with the Corinthians, he was able to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit operating in his ministry to them. Acts 18, 1 Corinthians 2 verses 6 to 7 Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. We speak wisdom among them that are perfect. The word perfect used by Paul here means to be spiritually mature or complete. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The wisdom of God is a way of preaching that few preachers understand. It has to do with rightly dividing the word of truth, which is the gospel of our salvation. Almost all false doctrines begin by someone who doesn't understand how to rightly divide scripture. If someone takes aspects of Israel's prophecy program and blends them together with the church's mystery program, they will almost always end up in confusion and we know who the author of that is. Satan is. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33 For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. They will read verses 6 through 8 above and think they understand them all the while they are taking them totally out of context and they really have no clue what they mean. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, we as believers in the dispensation of grace are a part of the mystery program that was in God's mind before the world began. We are neither Jew nor Greek in Christ, but we are become the one new man spoken of in the book of Ephesians by the resurrection of Christ. Galatians 3 verse 28 There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 8 Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. The princes of this world, Satan and his minions, princes of this world, would have never crucified Christ if they would have understood the wisdom of God. Since the scripture forbids princes and kings from being priests that rules out Caiaphas from being a prince, Paul was speaking about something else that was not human but angelic in nature. He was speaking of the fallen angels who are often referred to as princes. Daniel 10 verse 13 and 20 It is the resurrection of Christ that made it possible for believers to become that one new man whose destiny is in the heavenlies. We will one day be there with Christ when he casts Satan and his angels out of heaven at the midpoint of the tribulation period. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 9 to 11 But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, 
the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, these are the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. Example, Spiritual Blessings in Heavenly Places Ephesians 1 verse 3 The Spirit of God gave Paul this wisdom that had been hidden God for a little over 4,000 years to give to us who love him. This wisdom was kept hid from Satan so that he would go ahead with his plan to crucify Christ. Satan did not understand the wisdom of God because he is only a created being and didn't realize that he was sealing his own doom by putting Christ on the cross. The book of Ephesians informs us believers about all of our spiritual blessings in heavenly places. It also teaches us about the wisdom of God in chapter 3 where Paul tells us about the revelation of the mystery which was kept hid in God from before the foundation of the world. Satan, because of his worldly wisdom, thought he could forever keep his thrones and dominions in the heavenlies that he usurped when he fell but God had a plan to deal with him even before he ever created him and we are a part of that plan. He created the nation of Israel to rule and reign here on earth one day when the devil is defeated, which is his prophecy program. God also created the one new man, us, to rule and reign with him in heaven, which is his mystery program. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 12 to 13 Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The spirit of the world, this is sensual and devilish, and it teaches man's wisdom. We like to compare physical things with our physical minds. The Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, God asks us as believers to compare what he says in one portion of scripture with other scriptures in the word of God and then just believe them. Once we do, we will begin to know the wisdom of God and we will only then begin to understand the whole picture of what God has had planned throughout the ages. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 14 to 16 But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ, the natural man, a lost person. The things of the Spirit of God, they are spiritually discerned by comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. This only a saved person can do. We have the mind of Christ, we see with the eye of faith. The natural person will not believe the supernatural because they have not seen it for themselves. They cannot compare spiritual things with spiritual things and are easily misled by the wisdom of this world because they still are in Adam as natural men. Chapter 3 Babes in Christ 1 Corinthians 3 verses 1 to 2 and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Spiritual, a spiritually mature believer who understands the mysteries revealed unto the Apostle Paul. The mysteries are the meat of the Word of God. Carnal, those who only understand the basic historical and practical teachings of the Bible are feeding on the milk of God's Word. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 3 For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying, and strife, and divisions, are ye not carnal, and walk as men? Divisions come because there is a devil who is our adversary. He divides us with doctrinal errors that come about when we don't understand the mystery. The name Satan literally means the adversary. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. He is the author of confusion, and he is the one who divides the body by causing them to blend the mystery and prophecy programs together. 
By our inability to not rightly divide our own scriptures, Satan divides us to conquer us. One group takes one of Israel's eternal earthly promises and claims it as their own, while another group takes two or three others. Others try to take all of Israel's promises and the result is that everyone thinks that they are right and envy starts, then strife, and then ultimately division happens because of their carnal approach. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 4 For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? I am of Paul, while Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles, we only follow him as he followed Christ in accordance with the mystery program which Christ gave to him from heaven. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 16 Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1 Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Philippians 3 verse 17 Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. Paul did not follow Christ while he ministered to the nation of Israel under the prophecy program, he followed him according to the new program that was given to him by Christ which is for the body of Christ. I am of Apollos, an eloquent Jew from Alexandria who eventually taught in the church in Corinth. Acts 18 verse 24 And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. Are ye not carnal? Again, Paul gives the reader another rhetorical question where the answer of course is yes. It is carnal to follow a man. 1 Corinthians 3 verses 5 to 7 Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. The Lord has given to every man ministers who are to bring people to Christ today under the mystery program. God came up with the mystery program before the world was ever created, and he hid that plan in himself until after the resurrection of his son. Ephesians 3 verse 9. I have planted, God gave Paul the revelation of the mystery after he saved him on the Damascus road and gave him his commission to take to the Gentile world. Apollos watered, Apollos came along behind Paul and discipled people in Corinth. 1 Corinthians 3 verses 8 to 9 Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. Ye are God's husbandry, this has to do with the work of farming. God is cultivating us to build his body, the church. Ye are God's building, the church which is Christ's body. Colossians 1 verse 24 Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10 According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, Romans 15 verse 15, Galatians 2 verse 9, and Ephesians 3 colon 2, 7 to 8. As a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. Paul laid the foundation for the church there in Corinth, and then Apollos came by and built upon that foundation. Let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon, we are to take heed not to build our churches on prophecy truths for Israel mixed in with mystery truth for the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11 For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery is the foundation that Paul, the wise master builder, laid that we are to build upon. Ephesians 2 verse 20. Romans 16 verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. We are not to build upon the foundation of Jesus Christ according to the prophecy program as the twelve did to Israel during those early years.
They preached Christ according to the prophecies found in the word of God while we are to show them that there is a new program that we are to preach which was given to us by Paul as he received it from Christ, the mystery program. 1 Corinthians 3 verses 12 to 15 Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Gold, silver, precious stones, this is talking about building on the revelation of the mystery that Paul received from God which is the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Wood, hay, and stubble, if we build upon the prophecy program, we are building on the wrong foundation and the building will crumble when it is tried by the fire. While it is okay to teach people about the prophecy program to educate them about it, the program for today must be the primary thing that we are to teach to our people and not to confuse the two. Christianity confused the two programs because they don't see that they are to rightly divide the word of God as Paul teaches us in 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Once some of them are shown the two programs from the scriptures, they will come to understand how to rightly divide the word of truth. For a person to build gold upon the foundation that was laid by Paul, the mystery program, they must be about making all men see the fellowship of the mystery. Ephesians 3 verses 8 to 9. Of what sort it is, our service will be tried by fire one day. If you are building upon the prophecy program and you do not understand the revelation of the mystery, then some of your work will not abide and you will not receive the rewards you think you have coming to you. Notice three times the word fire is used as something that will be used to try our works of what sort they are. Notice that it says twice that it is by fire that our works will be judged. We are never put in the fire as believers, either purgatory or hell, our works are judged by fire, and whatever does not burn away because it was done for the wrong reason, or it was simply not something that was for today, will remain, and we shall receive a reward for what is left. Yet so is by fire, our works are purged, judged, not us. 1 Corinthians 3 verses 16 to 17 Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Ye are the temple of God, our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6 verses 15 to 20. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, God will destroy those who tried to defile our temples. We have eternal life, and God promises not to destroy us. 1 Corinthians 3 verses 18 to 19 Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Job 5 verse 13 He taketh the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the froward is carried headlong. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 20 And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Psalm 94 verse 11 The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, that they are vanity. Paul reminds us not to deceive ourselves, but to become as a fool, humble ourselves in our way of thinking on this subject, so that he might make us wise. All we have is the wisdom that Satan wants us to have if we fail to humble ourselves, the wisdom of this world. The prophecy program concerns this world and God's plan for it and Israel's place in that program, while the mystery program concerns the body of Christ and the spiritual blessings we have in heavenly places. 1 Corinthians 3 verses 21 to 23 Therefore let no man glory in men. For all things are yours, whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours and ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Let no man glory in men, don't be a follower of men. 
All things are yours. It doesn't matter if Paul, Apollos, or Cephas gave you something because they have nothing that originated from themselves. Everything they have ever received came from God. Chapter 4 Stewards of the Mystery 1 Corinthians 4 verses 1 to 2 Let a man so account of us, as of the ministers of Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Let a man so account of us, as of the ministers of Christ. When people had seen Paul and his helpers, he wanted them to see them as servants of Christ. Stewards of the mysteries of God, stewards are governors over a household, like the old British governesses that were often hired by wealthy European families to care for every aspect of the home and family. We as stewards are to take care of every aspect of the mysteries that God has entrusted to us concerning the age of grace that we now live in. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. If a person does not understand the mystery program, he cannot be a faithful steward over it, but that is what is required. 1 Corinthians 4 verses 3 to 4 But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yeah, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. It is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. It's not a big deal to Paul what men say about him personally. They liked Apollos preaching better because he was a better orator than Paul. Paul didn't care about this carnal judging by the Corinthians. I judge not mine own self. Paul did not worry about their carnal judging. I know nothing by myself. Paul received the revelation of the mystery from the risen Christ. There is coming a day when the judge of all the universe will judge us according to Paul's gospel. Romans 2 verse 16 Yet am I not hereby justified? This is not speaking of salvation here, but God is justifying Paul's actions as a steward. Paul was specifically speaking about his stewardship of the mysteries that he received from God, and he was not worried about his day of judgment in those areas because he was faithful. He that judgeth me is the Lord. We should not worry about what others say about us. We should be concerned about being good stewards of the mysteries of God. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 5 Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. Until the Lord come, this is referring to the rapture and the judgment seat of Christ for the body of Christ. Romans 2 verse 16 the hidden things of darkness, Christ will judge the hidden things of darkness peoples judging one another at the judgment seat of Christ. And then shall every man have praise of God, people were praising one man over another, and Paul was saying we are all just servants ministering the mysteries and not worried about personalities. 1 Corinthians 4 verses 6 to 7 and these things, Brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who mocketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that? Thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory, as if thou hadst not received it? By watching and listening and obeying Paul and Apollos as examples of faithful stewards of the mysteries of God the Corinthians should have learned not to exalt themselves above others, because they, Paul and Apollos, didn't. Whatever knowledge Paul, Apollos, or any of them had they got it from God in the first place where all truth emanates from, they didn't get it from their own intellect. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 8 Now ye are full, now ye are rich, ye have reigned as kings without us, and I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. Ye have reigned as kings without us. The Corinthians had the Apostle Paul as their founding pastor and Apollos as their minister afterwards. They should have been full of the truth, and they were and for a while they reigned in that, but they started to become complacent. 1 Corinthians 4 verses 9 to 10 For I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong, ye are honorable, but we are despised. 
God hath set forth us apostles last. The apostles had a very hard time compared to the average believer who worked a regular job. They were constantly on the front lines with the enemy and because of that they had many more opportunities to run into opposition, which they did. 1 Corinthians 4 verses 11 to 13 Even unto this present hour we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place and labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it, being defamed, we entreat, we are made as the filth of the world and are the offscouring of all things unto this day. While the one in the secular world is paid handsomely, the other makes little to nothing for doing the most important job in the world. 1 Corinthians 4 verses 14 to 16 I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons I warn you. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. In Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Again, Paul wants those whom he led to the Lord to continue to follow him as he follows Christ. Paul wants what is best for them and he warns them to flee from those divisive ones in the church. I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Paul begs the Corinthians to follow him as he followed the risen, ascended Christ in the mystery doctrines that Jesus gave to him from heaven. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1 Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Philippians 3 verse 17 Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 17 For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son, and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. For this cause have I sent unto Timotheus. Timothy was to teach them to remember Paul's ways of instruction in the mysteries which he received from Christ. Who is my beloved son? Paul led Timotheus to the Lord, thus the title of son. This is Timothy. 1 Corinthians 4 verses 18 to 21 Now some are puffed up, as though I would not come to you. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know, not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod, or in love, and in the spirit of meekness? Some are puffed up. This is speaking about their arrogance. Chapter 5 colon 1 dash 2. But the power, the power of God would be demonstrated if some in Corinth didn't repent before Paul returned to them. The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Paul says he will come to Corinth if the Lord wills and that he will not listen to those who are puffed up. He also says that he will come with the power of God which is as a rod to those who oppose the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm.